Okay, before we start with list of headings, I would like to give you some instructions. The first thing is you need to use skim reading technique. You will not read all the paragraph. You're just going to skim read the paragraph and you will see where the answer is, number one. Number two, there are three parts of the paragraph which are important. The first sentence, the middle sentence, and sometimes the last sentence. But you need to locate it. Sometimes the second sentence gives you the clue, okay? Okay, another important thing, the headings they have given, you should have a skill to read and interpret those headings. Now, what is reading and interpreting those headings? I will tell you all that, okay? Interpreting the heading means when you read a heading, you should know immediately that this type of information I need to find in a paragraph. I tell you how. Everyone, please come to list of headings. Good. Please come to list of headings. Now we are going to, and you will do it very quickly. I advise you to read all the headings first and then skim read first paragraph and see which heading is there. And it will click you. Like we did uh, the first seven questions. The answer clicked us. When they use the word steam engine, it clicked us, yeah, old times and all that, right? So, heading number one. And one more thing. For list of headings, when you write your answer, you must use Roman number. Roman number. One is I. Two is I, I. Three is I, I, I. Okay. <laughs> and four is I, V. Five is V and all that. Okay. So you need to write Roman numbers as they have written over here. And if you take computer delivered dials, you can drag and drop. There is no problem at all. Okay. You can drag a heading and drop it there. Then you can drag means with the mouse. You can just drag and drop. Now, heading number one, various sources of supplies. Now listen, various sources of supplies. In one paragraph, they will say, they get meat from this source. They get wheat from there. Okay? They get biscuits from there. They get water from there. They get electricity, electricity from there. What is it? Various sources of supply. This is what I call interpretation. And if you only various sources of supply, effects of going outside, you will never find it. Heading number two, effects of going outside. In one paragraph, they will say, I went out of the house and within a minute, my nose turned red. What is it? Effects of going outside. Outside means in the cold, right? Minus 40, what was that? Minus 46 is normal, right? Heading number three, oimia con past and present. Very simple. In one paragraph, they will say oimia con was. And now oimia con is. So focus a paragraph with the past sentences and present sentences. Heading number four, contrast in the landscape. Now, what is landscape? Mountains, that is landscape. Plains, that's what we call midan, that is landscape. Lakes, rivers, ravines, all that is landscape. A contrast in the landscape. In one paragraph, they will say deep ravines, high mountains, then there is the plain field. So that is contrast. Plain field is the opposite of mountain, okay, like that. Next, heading number five, animals that can survive cold. In one paragraph, they may talk about animals that can survive cold, like reindeer and some other animals, maybe horses, that they can survive cold. And the whole, par I mean, uh, this should be, we use the word gist, or in simple words, we use the word the bottom of a paragraph or the main idea of the paragraph should be an animal that survives cold. In one paragraph, if they say there are many animals which live there and they don't talk about animals that survive cold, so will that paragraph will, will match with it? No. no, you need to see the gist of a paragraph or the summary of the, or the main idea of a paragraph should be this. Next, how Oimia Khan is affected by its location? You know it already. You read a paragraph, huh? Oimiyakon is far from Sitsin. Which paragraph was that? E. e. Yeah, so heading number six will go with paragraph e. e. You can do it now. Let's do the clever thing. Okay, we read it already, so we do it now. Keeping out the cold. Now listen, keeping out the cold. For example, I'm wearing this sweater to keep out the cold. So in one paragraph, they will say people use firewood. They wear warm clothes. 
how to keep out the or they make houses in a way that there is no cold in there and all that next heading number eight not the only challenging time of the year not the challenging means good time good time like say spring is the time when there is no trouble there so that is not the only challenging time of the year or if they say in summer the weather is moderate so that is not the only challenging time of the year heading number uh, eight uh, then nine <clears throat> better than its reputation now what is better than reputation for example if if i go to yeah when I went to Dubai, people told me there are many fines over there. If you are traveling in metro and you are chewing a gum, there is a fine. If you cross the road and there is no zebra crossing, there is a fine. When I went over there, I didn't find anything. So it means it's better than its reputation. Sometimes, you know, people say, don't go to Pakistan, right? But when they come to Pakistan, they say, well, it's okay. There's no problem. So it's better than its reputation. So if they say in one paragraph, they will say, well, the area is known to be like this, but actually it is not. So better than reputation, right? Heading number 10, very few facilities in building. Building means house. If they say in the house, they have water supply for one hour only. They get electricity for three hours only. They get water, this and that, heating and all that. Very few facilities in building. Building means their houses. Heading number 11, more snow than anywhere else in the world. They will calculate the amount of snow in one paragraph, right? And let's see how do they calculate and then it's, it's going to be there. Now, we come to paragraph A. <clears throat> paragraph A, uh, skim reading. Again, I'm telling you, if you read everything carefully, uh, you know, when you skim read, you read, then you skip a line, then you read, then you skip a line. Then you read it's reading, skipping, reading, skipping, and all that. So let's start. You don't need a set nav to drive to Miyakon. From your coast, you can cross Lena River and simply, it's just telling us about the roads and all that. Please come to third line. Third line after full stop. The journey takes two, two days of hard driving, two days of glistering landscape, frozen rivers, untouched snow, two days of endless forest, breathtaking beauty. Two days of, uh, penet to penetrate the heart of Siberia and reach the coldest inhabited place on earth. The beauty surprised me. Now, be careful. In the conclusion, he has given the main idea. Beauty surprised me. Siberia isn't known for its pleasant appearance. It is always billed as a place of hardships. What does it mean? Better than reputation. Siberia isn't known for its pleasant appearance. It is always billed as a place of hardships. Okay, so better than reputation, heading number nine. nine. So correct answer for question number 28 is heading number nine. Okay, now let's go on. Paragraph B, and one more thing. Whenever you start list of headings, try to start with the shortest paragraph first, then the second shortest paragraph, and then you can come towards the large paragraphs. Paragraph B, as we left the flat plane, underline flat plane, the road began to twist and turn, underline twist and turn, leading us into untouched hills, underline hills, flat plains, twist and turn, hills, and on towards the mountains. What is it? Landscape. Contrast in the landscape. So correct answer for this is actually that. Okay. Which option is that, by the way? Four. Exactly. A contrast in the landscape. Well done. That's very good. Now, let's go on. Paragraph C, despite the magical ambience of the Siberian wilderness, its reputation for hardship hit me every time I climbed out of the vehicle. Within less than a minute, the skin all over my face began to feel as if it were burning. I climb out of the vehicle. 
effects of going outside. Which heading is that? Heading number two. Well done. And when you select a heading, cross it from the list so that you don't use it second time. Paragraph C, heading number two, effects of going outside. Paragraph D, Uimiakon is quite little town. Which tense is that? Present. The world's coldest of about 550 inhabitants with its own power station, a school, two shops and a small hospital. It's probably originated. Which tense? It originated. So Oimiakon originated and Oimiakon is, what is it? Past and present. Which heading? Heading third. Oimiakon, past and present. Well done. Very good. Okay, <clears throat> let's go on. Paragraph E, we've done that already. Paragraph E, so which heading is appropriate? Heading number 6, how Oimiakon is affected by its location. Now come to paragraph F. Day-to-day -day life in Oimiakon presents certain challenges during the long winters there are hardly any modern household conveniences. Household conveniences. And for household conveniences, let's see what do they talk about? What do they say? Household is related to building. Conveniences is facilities. And they say there are hardly any modern household conveniences. Means very few facilities in building. And by the way, over here, the first sentence gave us the answer. Now, paragraph G. The power station provides winter heating in the form of hot water, but many houses lie outside its range and rely on their own wood-burning stove. Fuel is plentiful enough in the surrounding forest, but someone still has to venture out to cut the wood Everybody in Oimiakon owns good boots, hats made of animal fur and fur-lined mittens. So, keeping out the cold. For that, they use the word winter heating. Keep out means how to escape from cold or how to protect yourself from cold. So, winter heating, then they use wood burning, then they use boots, hat made of animal fur and fur-lined mittens. Have you seen mittens? Only, you know, there are gloves. Gloves, they have five fingers. Mittens, only this part is one and this part is separate. That is what we call mitten. They are gloves, uh, like, you know, cooking gloves. Cooking gloves, so fingers are not separate. They are all together. This part is together and this part is separate. That is, that is what they call mittens. They are gloves. So anyways, in this paragraph, they tell us how to keep out cold. Okay, paragraph H. Oimiakons. Two shops, now shops, they provide supply. Two shops keep a decent stock of basic foods in tins and packets, but locals also have to do it yourself options, including hunting, trapping, ice fishing, reindeer breeding, and horse breeding. So what is it? These are various sources of supplies, and there is a trap. They talk about reindeer breeding, horse breeding, but have they mentioned that these animals can survive in the cold? There is no mention. Those who don't understand, they see horse, animal, right answer is five. It's not the word, it's the idea you need to pick, okay? All right, last paragraph, and we still have some headings left. They always give you more headings than the paragraphs. Paragraph I, spring is the best season. What is it? Not the only challenging time of the year. Spring is the best season. Which heading? Eight. Not the only challenging time of the year. Time of the year is spring. And best season is not the only challenging. So right answer for question number 36 is para, uh, heading number Eight. And you will write all these headings on your answer sheet if you are doing paper delivered IELTS in the same way. Okay? All right.
All right, now let's go on. We are left with list of headings and there are five paragraphs and we're just going to find heading. Okay, uh, I'm reading it from the beginning. Section three, questions 28 to 32. The text on pages 26 and 27 has five sections. Now they didn't use the word paragraph. They said five sections. One section may have two paragraphs. Can you see section A? How many paragraphs? Section B and section C? Three paragraphs. Section D and section E? Two paragraphs. Okay? Uh, for list of headings, it's a good idea to start with the shortest paragraph, then the second shortest paragraph, right? Then the third one and the longest paragraphs you can leave for the end. Okay, don't follow the order that I will start from A. First, you can start from B, then you can do D and then E and then you can come back. There is no problem. You can do it anyways, okay? Now, for list of headings, it is important that you read, understand and interpret the heading. If you do not understand the heading, you will put, and headings are so confusing that you would see one heading is good for every paragraph. You want to put it everywhere, okay? So this is how when you have the wrong answers. Now, important point, interpret the heading. Let's read headings together. Heading number one, solving the puzzle of papyrus document. In one paragraph, they will talk about the myth of papyrus document and how to solve that myth. So A will go there. Yasin, please attend this call. Heading number two, importance of written records and different ways of recording them. In one paragraph, they will say written documents are very important in our life. Today we have our ID cards, certificates, blah, 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 and all that. Heading number three, use of papyrus for a range of purposes. In one paragraph, they will say, with papyrus, people made boats. With papyrus, some people made baskets. With papyrus, some people made rope. So range of uses. In one paragraph, they will talk like that. Heading number four, suggestions for future possibilities for papyrus. Future possibilities are mostly in the last paragraph, okay? If there are any, because you know, there are five questions and there are eight headings. What does it mean? Three headings are extra and these three extra headings are enough to confuse you. And if you use those three extra headings, your three answers will be absolutely wrong. So be careful. Next, heading number five, how papyrus was cultivated. Now listen, when one heading has end, you have to be careful with the second part. One part is cultivated. Second part, different manufacturing methods. Now if with cultivation, they talk about manufacturing method, this will go there. But if they talk about cultivation only and they don't discuss manufacturing method, then it will not go there. Heading number six, decline of papyrus use. And this will come in the last paragraph, decline. Initially, they will say it was very popular. People wrote different documents on papyrus. And then towards the end, they will say paper was invented by Chinese and people stopped using papyrus. So this heading, I mean, you should know which, where this, head, this paragraph is going to be. Heading number seven, preservation and destruction of papyrus documents. In one paragraph, they will say how to preserve them and how they get destroyed. If you remember, we did a paragraph about insects and all that, probably it will go there. Heading number eight, process of papyrus production. Now, can you see heading number five and heading number eight? They are a bit confusing. Heading number five is how papyrus was cultivated and different methods, manufacturing methods. And heading number eight is papyrus of, uh, process of papyrus production. So be careful with these two headings, okay? Now, we start from heading number one. Paragraph A, sorry. Paragraph A. Uh, the reading skill which you need here is called skim reading. Skim reading is you read quickly, and by the way, for list of headings, first sentence, if first sentence is a general sentence, then second sentence is important. And sometimes first three, four sentences are all general, 
in the middle they come to the point so what you need to look for is what is the gist or main idea of this paragraph once you find the main idea you will match a heading with that main idea and sometimes main idea is as simple as in the first sentence first three four words will give you main idea you'll become happy and sometimes main idea is in the middle otherwise at the end okay so let's see i'm reading paragraph a libraries and archives are cultural crossroads of knowledge now this is general information i'm skipping it please come to third line after full stop bureaucracies have become the backbone of civilization as governments try to keep track of population business transactions and taxes at present level at personal level our lives are governed by documents what does it mean our lives are governed by documents it means documents are very important if you don't have id card if you don't have driving license so our lives are governed by documents we possess we are certified on paper literally from birth to death birth certificate death certificate and all that and written documents carry enormous cultural importance so he's talking about documents and their importance and all that so which heading is appropriate go down the list and tell me which heading is appropriate and when you use list of headings you use roman number okay correct option for paragraph a is heading number 2 and heading number 2 is importance of written records and for that he said at personal levels our lives are governed by documents and different ways of recording them and then he talked about birth certificate death certificate and all that so one heading will be used once only question number 28 section a heading number 2 is the right answer and you will cross heading number 2 as well okay so that you don't use it again and if you use if you have one wrong answer you will make two wrong answers for example heading number 2 is for some other question and you use it for some other question two wrong answers so be extra careful okay now please come to paragraph b papyrus is strongly associated with egyptian culture although all the ancient civilizations around the mediterranean used it papyrus sage is a tall grass like plant it was harvested from shallow water and swampland any anything about harvested heading number 5 heading number 5 is cultivated now cultivated and harvested are two opposite things first you cultivate and then you harvest so you cannot harvest before you before you cultivate and then you harvest so it's not that leave it it was harvested from shallow water and swamp lands on the banks of the uh, river nile manufacturing sheets of papyrus from papyrus sedge was a complex messy process and then hammer together so what is he telling us how to manufacture process of manufacturing that is heading number 8 heading number 5 is how papyrus was cultivated and manufactured he did not talk about cultivation he talked about harvest harvesting only okay so right answer is heading number 8 process of papyrus production they said you join them and then hammer together and all that okay now please come to options paragraph c and you should cross heading number 8 also once you are done with one option you can cross it okay now please come to paragraph c in moist climates cellulose rich sheets of papyrus would readily decay becoming covered by mold or full of holes from attacks by insects but in dry climate such as middle east papyrus is stable rot resistant writing surface and all that so he's telling us when does it decay and when is it stable now see if there is any heading about preservation about destruction that is heading number 
and heading number 7 is preservation and destruction of papyrus documents. Now, what is destruction? Readily decay, becoming covered by mold or full of holes from attacks, that is destruction. And second is preservation, what is that? Dry climate such as Middle East papyrus is stable, rot resistant writing surface. Okay? So, heading number 8 is gone. Now, we move on to next paragraph. Paragraph D and D starts like, uh, you know there is D, yeah. Besides their use in record keeping, papyrus stems were used in many other aspects of Mediterranean life. What is that? Range of purposes. As for boat construction, making ropes, sails, baskets, as well as source of food. So, what is that? Range of Exactly, heading number 3, use of papyrus for a range of purposes. That is for food, boat making, rope making, basket making and all that. Heading number 3 will go there. And finally, we have got paragraph E, E for elephant. True paper was probably invented in China in the first century, okay. Like papyrus, it was constructed from a meshwork of plant fibers, by, but the Chinese used fibers from the white mulberry tree, which yielded a tough, flexible material that could be folded, stretched, and compressed. The adoption of this paper by Western culture soon rendered papyrus obsolete. So, obsolete means decay of papyrus, and they started using paper. Which paragraph is that? Which heading? Six. Heading number 6, decline of papyrus. And what is the word for decline? The adoption of this paper by Western cultures soon rendered papyrus obsolete. Rendered papyrus obsolete means decline of papyrus. So, for question number 32, section E, right answer is heading number 6. list of headings. So, let us go on. Uh, for list of headings, now you are already familiar with the passage. So, it is not going to be that difficult for you. The first thing. Second, for list of headings, you need skim reading. Skim reading is like there is paragraph A. If I give you half minute to quickly go through it and to see what it is about. Remember, there are three parts of the paragraph which are important. Some paragraphs are direct. They start with the main idea. So, in the first couple of lines, you will find the main idea. Okay? Then, some paragraphs are indirect. They start with a general comment and then in the middle, they introduce the main idea. Basically, list of headings is for the main idea of the paragraph. And uh, some paragraphs, they start with a general comment and when they conclude the paragraph, then they give you the main idea, right? So, three parts of the paragraph, they are important, the beginning, the middle and the last or second last sentence. So, you need to find that. Now, for list of headings, it is important that you read and understand the headings. If you do not understand the headings, you will start playing a guess game. This heading will go there and then you will have a feeling one heading can be placed everywhere. It is so good heading that you can place it everywhere. And remember, there are always two to three extra headings. If there are six questions, uh, we've got six questions, they have given us eight headings. Two extra headings are really confusing. You will have a feeling that this heading can go with this paragraph, that paragraph, so you need to avoid them. Now, I tell you how to read and understand headings. Heading number one, enterprise arising from success 
in other countries. Enterprise is a sort of a company which is arising from success in other countries. So they will talk about other countries like UK, Poland, Spain and a company that arised from success from other countries. Heading number two, hope that stocks will inspire a range of emotions and actions. Right? You know, stocks are associated with the birth of a new baby. You might have seen that picture where there is a bird and in the beak of the bird, the bird is holding a baby. That bird is stock. Okay? Yeah. So, hope that stocks will inspire a range of emotions and actions. Underline range of emotions and actions. For that, they can say love and this and that and all that. Emotions and actions. Heading number three, support from some organizations but not from others. Now, if you remember, in one paragraph, they talked about it, where that Sussex committee refused to do that. So they say support from some organizations, but not from others. So which paragraph is that? Paragraph D, by the way. Heading number four, finding new types of habitat. New types of habitat means, habitat means place to live. And new type means a different type of place to live. Heading number five, opposition from the general public. So in one paragraph, they will talk about opposition from general public against the stocks. Heading number six, a sign of hope in difficult times. In one paragraph, they will say stock is a sign of hope in difficult times and all that. Heading number seven, creatures which represent both joy and opposition. Now, they will talk about creatures which represent joy, means happiness, and opposition. And heading number eight, stocks causing delight and the revival of public events. If you remember, festival, right? So, which paragraph was that? Okay, we'll just look for that and see which one is the right one. Yeah, that's the E paragraph. So two questions we have already answered because we are familiar with the passage. Section, uh, question number 32, uh, para section E, right answer is heading number eight, stocks causing delight and revival of public events. And then we use this paragraph D, heading number three, support from some organizations, but not from others. Two questions answered already. That is question number 31 and 32. Okay. Now, please come to paragraph A. Paragraph A. I'm starting it from here. Last definitive record of a pair of white stocks successfully breeding in Britain was this and that. Now, they started with past event. Now, let's skip some lines and please come to fifth line after full stop. Fifth line after full stop. Stocks are migrants. Found it? I'm reading paragraph A. Fifth line after full stop. Stocks are migrants arriving after the end of winter, nesting on rooftops and happily associating with humans. And because of this, they have long been a symbol of hope and new life. Yet their association with rebirth also meant they became a symbol of rebellion. Symbol of new life, symbol of rebellion. Now go back and see if there is any heading that talks about joy and opposition. Joy and opposition. Symbol of new life, that is joy. Symbol of rebellion, that is opposition. So that is heading number seven. So question number 28, Section A, heading number 7 is the right answer. And by the way, when you find a right heading, you need to cross that also. Cross heading number 7 from the list. Okay? Let's go on. Now we'll do paragraph B. <clears throat> so we start with paragraph B. So after such a long absence, there was a great excitement when in April of this year, a pair of white stocks built an untidy nest. We read it already. Then infertile eggs. We read about that already. Now let's read on. I'm reading it from fifth line after full stop. The pair. Found it? Okay. Fifth line after full stop. The pair are only four years old and stocks can live for over 30 with their first attempts to breed 
and this is the same thing prospects for next year are encouraging these young stocks are part of project to return the species to britain inspired by reintroductions in european countries that more than reach their target and imported from poland and all that now let's see if anything matches with that inspired by reintroductions in european countries means something that was successful in european countries it was inspired by them heading number 1 an enterprise arising from success in other countries and for other countries they have used european countries okay uh, inspired by reintroductions in european countries inspired by reintroduction in european countries means success in other countries so question number 29 heading number 1 is the right answer and you should cross heading number 1 from the list as well now we've got paragraph c in the face of reports of unrelenting ecological loss un estimates a million species are on the brink of extinction globally the white stocks return is refreshing news white stock return is a refreshing news okay now listen what is happening try to understand that i'm reading it again in the face of reports of unrelenting ecological loss what does it mean un estimates a million species are on the brink of extinction globally extinction means they are dying out like dinosaurs dinosaurs are extinct so united nations has reported that uh, millions of bird species are on the brink on the brink means very close to become extinction the white stocks return is refreshing news when there is disappointment there is something hopeful so which heading for that heading number 6 a sign of hope in difficult times what is sign of hope white stocks return and what is difficult times million species are on the brink of extinction globally that is difficult times so question number 30 section c right answer is heading number 6 and we cross heading number 6 as well now please come to paragraph d and yet its path to restoration in the uk has not been smooth support from conservation bodies has been surprisingly difficult to obtain some were hard pressed with their own initiative while others were simply reluctant to stick their necks out in addition the committee of sussex wildlife trust raised doubts about the stock ever having been a british bird they also had concerns that english bred birds would migrate across the channel and feared that their messy nests and closeness to humans would cause a hazard rubbish falling down people's chimney so how has the reintroduction project managed to get going what makes i'm reading next paragraph what makes it in some way special is that it has had a rely on private individuals so they did not get help from companies from ngos but they got help from private individuals what does it mean some people helped them some people did not help them so that is heading number 3 support from some organizations but not from others okay so heading number 3 question number 31 it's the right answer and you will cross heading number 3 as well Sir, yes i'll answer your question later let me finish this then i'll answer your question okay now we will come to paragraph e and paragraph e is about what across europe as stock populations have suffered from the draining of wetlands and disappearance of insect rich pastures and meadows their loss has been felt deeply a few years ago a tearful old woman in a village in belarus showed me the nest on her roof empty of stalks for the first time in living memory where stalks have been reintroduced they are greeted with great happiness and some historic stalk festivals have been restored means stalks are coming back people welcome them they have some stalk festivals spanish erect poles and all that 
Now let's see which heading is appropriate for that. Heading number eight, stocks causing delight and the revival of public events. Public event is stock festival, right? Causing delight is happiness. So heading number eight for question number 32, we cross it as well. Now we are left with question number 33. <clears throat> Paragraph F. A driving motivation behind the project in the UK is the aspiration that the stock's return will spark feelings of empathy and affection. Feelings, emotions, feelings of empathy and affection from townspeople who see their nests on rooftops. Heading number two, hope that stocks will inspire a range of emotions and actions. And by the way, emotions are here. Spark feeling of empathy. Feeling of empathy is emotion. And what is action? Same paragraph, third last line. The public response has been overwhelming with crowds coming to see white stocks flying free in England. Coming to see, that is their action. Right? And emotion is feeling a uh, spark feeling of empathy that is emotion and action is given in the last line of the paragraph so question number 33 section f right answer is second heading so all the correct answers are 28 heading number 7 and one important thing whenever you write headings you will use roman numbers don't use english numbers for example question number 28 right answer is 7 so you will write v i i 29 Heading number 1, 30, heading number 6, 31, heading number 3, 32, heading number 8, and 33, heading number 2. And you will write 2 like I, I. Okay, you need to follow this, right? Thank you. Okay, let's just make a start with list of headings and we see how to answer list of headings. Uh, most important thing, like you know in true false not given, most important part is the question. So in list of headings, it is very important for you guys to read and understand the heading. If you do not understand the heading and you are reading the passage, you will never find the right answer. So your exact understanding of the heading is very important. Now let's read together. Heading number one, time when opportunities were limited. Which tense is that? Past tense. So we look for a paragraph where they will talk about a time where opportunities were limited. Heading number two, we will find them later. Let's read the headings only. Heading number two, Reasons why Ferrando's product is needed. Now, what is Ferrando's product? Bottle and helmet and all that. So, in one paragraph, they will tell us the reasons why they needed Ferrando's product. Heading number three, no risk solution. They will provide a solution which does not involve any type of risk. So, that is called no risk solution. Heading number four, two inventions and some physical details. Two inventions, bicycle helmet, glass bottle. So we'll find a paragraph where they talk about two helmets, uh, two inventions and some physical details. Heading number five, contrasting views of different generations, like previous generation, their view, and current generation, their view, and contrasting views. Contrasting means opposite views. Heading number six, disturbing experience. Experience was disturbing. Some sort of experiment experience and it was disturbing. Heading number seven, problems with replacing a consumer item. There was one consumer item and the problem to replace that consumer item. So in one paragraph, they will talk about that. 
हेडिंग नंबर एट लुकिंग बैक एट वाई वॉटर वॉज बॉटल्ड वाई वॉटर वॉज बॉटल्ड इन द पास्ट ओके इट्स जस्ट लाइक दैट नाउ ऑल ऑफ यू प्लीज कम टू फर्स्ट पैराग्राफ पैराग्राफ ए In 2017 Carlos Ferrando Spanish engineer turned into entrepreneur saw a piece of art in a museum that profoundly affected him what lies under a photographic composition by Indonesian digital artist uh Ferdi Rizkianto shows a child crouching by the edge of the ocean and lifting up a wave to the wheel a cluster of assorted plastic waste from polythene bags to water bottles the artwork designed to raise public awareness left ferrando angry so it was about environment a lot of plastic on the ocean so the artwork designed to raise public awareness left ferrando angry and fueled with entrepreneurial ideas he thought now we will not use plastic we will use other stuff which is recyclable and all that now which heading a uh, disturbing experience heading number 6 well done why disturbing left ferrando angry and fueled with entrepreneurial ideas it was disturbing for him to see a lot of plastic waste on the bank of the ocean and then he came up with all this so heading number 6 question number 28 paragraph a and you need to cross heading number 6 as well you will not read it again okay let's go on we've got question number 29 paragraph b ferrando runs a spanish based design company closca that produces an indigenous foldable bicycle helmet one product bicycle helmet but he has now also designed a stylish glass water bottle so two products two inventions he has designed which option well done heading number 4 two inventions and some physical details now where are physical details a stretchy silicon strap and magnetic closure mechanism that means it can be blah 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 these are the physical details so heading number 4 question number 29 paragraph b and you should cross heading number 4 as well now question number 30 paragraph c <clears throat> the intention is to persuade people to stop buying water in plastic bottles the saving consumers money and reducing the plastic waste piling up in our oceans okay then bottled water is now 100 billion business and 81% of the bottles are not recycled it's a complete waste water is only 1.5% of the price of the bottle ferrando cries and then they talk about environment and all that okay so let's go back which heading is going to be appropriate for that sorry heading number 2 heading number 2 problems with replacing consumer item no heading number 2 reasons why ferrando's product is needed now what are the reasons intention is to persuade people to stop buying water in plastic bottles thus saving consumers money and reducing the plastic waste piling up in our ocean bottled water is this 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 so these are the reasons why we need a recyclable bottle so reasons why ferrando's product is needed we are drinking a lot of water in the bottle these water bottles are actually adding to the uh, what do you say ocean garbage and that's why we need that product okay Let's go on we've got paragraph D for doctor Fernando's story is fascinating because it seems like an indicator of something unexpected 3 decades ago conspicuous consumption purchase of luxuries and all that 
and then he says the closing decades of 20th century were a time when it seemed that anything could be turned into the commodity hence the fact that water became a consumer item three decades ago something was different and then anything can be sold and water became a consumer item so yeah heading number 5 is contrasting views of different generation no they didn't talk about contrasting views looking back at why water was bottled heading number 8 looking back 3 decades ago conspicuous consumption handbags blah 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 and then they say indeed the closing decades of 20th century were a time when it seemed that anything could be turned into a commodity hence the fact that water became a consumer item sold in plastic bottles instead of just emerging for free from a tap so that is looking back at why water was bottled okay now paragraph e uh, we go to paragraph e today though conspicuous extravagance no longer seems desirable among consumers now focus this now recycling is fashionable as is cycling rather than driving plastic water bottles have become so common that they do not command status instead what many millennials young people born in the late 20th century prefer to post on social media are real refillable bottles or even the ones widespread uh, thermos bottles some teenagers now see this is the view of some teenagers currently this is their present view first they talked about the millennial generation and now they are talking about teen ages and currently this is the second generation try to understand young people born in the late 20th century what is that one generation second some teenagers currently this is another generation think that these stainless steel vacuum insulated water bottles that are coming back onto the market are ultra cool and all that so which option is that five contrasting views of different generations and generations are only two young people born in the late 20th century and second generation is some teenagers currently and their contrasting views so question number 32 paragraph e correct answer is 5 paragraph f It is uncertain when Kloska will succeed in its goal although its foldable bike helmet is available in some outlets in New York including the Museum of Modern Art it can be very hard for any design entrepreneur to really take off in the global mass market though not as hard as it might have been in the past what does it mean heading number 1 time when opportunities were limited and what is for that a few decades ago he or she would have had to either raise a bank loan borrow money and all that opportunities were limited at that time okay question number 33 paragraph f heading number 1 Okay question number 34 paragraph G please come to paragraph G Question number 34 paragraph G Yes Okay paragraph G please come to first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth last line using this approach found it using this approach none of the donors has a stake in his idea nor does he have any debt when no one has stake in his idea there is no debt what does it mean yes no risk right stake free 
and no debt. So it means there is no risk in that. So question number 34, paragraph G, correct answer is option three. Heading number three, a no risk solution. Okay. All right.